I'm gonna add special effects when I actually do the video. Okay, it's recording. All right, so let's start by talking about, like, what am I actually talking about with an essay? Just as some background, you're gonna be writing this kind of essay for basically the rest of the time you're in an academic setting. Okay, when you're in post-secondary, you'll be writing these essays. When you're in high school, you'll certainly be writing these essays. The five paragraph persuasive essay is exactly the assignment that you're gonna be writing on your provincial achievement test. All right, so I'm gonna talk about like skills that are pretty necessary for moving forward. This is a uh, very high on the list. If you ask me at the start of the year, what's the most important thing to walk away from grade nine humanities being able to do well, it's being able to structure an essay. You can take this format, all you're gonna be changing moving forward is like the depth and the nature of the evidence that you provide and how complex you get with your arguments. The structure is gonna stay virtually the same, all right? So it's really crucial that we kind of wrap our head around what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a five paragraph essay. Today, I'm gonna to go over the overall structure. I'm gonna very briefly tell you what's gonna go in each paragraph. And then I am going to give you time to actually do your own planning. We'll walk through like what I would do if I was planning for an essay so that you kind of have your head uh, in the right spot. So when we're talking about a five paragraph essay, it's exactly what you see up here, five paragraphs. Each one of these colored blocks represents a paragraph in your essay. Uh, okay. You got an introduction where I'm bringing in my topic, I've got three body paragraphs where I'm bringing in my supporting evidence, and then I got a conclusion where I wrap it all together. Okay, in terms of length, we're looking at an introduction of six to eight sentences, a body paragraph of 10 to 12 sentences each, and a conclusion of four to six sentences. What we put in each of these individual things, again, we'll look at them over the next few days and we'll walk you through that process. But that's the basic idea. When you're talking about a five paragraph essay, when a teacher asks you to write a five paragraph essay, when you're asked to write an essay, you can assume that this is the structure they're looking for. Introduction, three body paragraphs, conclusion. Okay, same basic idea. How many of you have written one of these before? I'm gonna guess most of you. Okay, so again, this isn't gonna be brand new stuff to you. Uh, you will, as you progress through, have different teachers who have different expectations about what exactly they want included. But for the most part, this is what you're going to be looking for. Okay, the key here is, the structure, right? You can have the greatest ideas in the world. You can have the greatest arguments in the world. You can't present them in a logical fashion. <coughs> That's going to detract from the quality of your arguments, right? So knowing the structure and applying it is a very important skill to have, okay? And I've tried to, over however many times I've taught essays, tried a variety of different ways. I think the number one thing is keeping it simple. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible for you guys, and, and uh, when we need to get more complex, we will. Uh, but we'll start with the basics. Okay, so let's walk through each of the three parts. Okay, the first is the introduction. Okay, the introduction, obviously the idea is to get your reader hooked in. It's an essay. We can acknowledge that most people don't want to read essays. Okay, but at the same time, we want to draw the reader in. I don't want to like walk up to somebody I've just met and punch them in the face. That'd be a terrible introduction. Right? So starting your essay off by going, this is going to be an essay about the novel and then there were none, that's like walking up to somebody and punching them in the face. They're not gonna like it very much and they're probably gonna walk away from you. Maybe charge you with assault, possibly. Right? But it's not gonna be an attractive way to start. I wanna hook my reader in. I want to be like, hey, my name's David and I can do a backflip and like do a backflip. That'd be pretty cool. People would be like, wow, this is interesting. I wanna get to know this person more. You wanna do that with your essay. Can you do a backflip? Eh? See, you can do it right now. Yeah, let's see. Oh, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. That's like using AI to write your essay for you. Doing a backflip on a trampoline, that's getting extra special. You can't do that. So, um, I didn't mention this, but before I talk too much about introductions, I should probably also pass on what I mentioned in my last class, which is that we teach a specific structure and I'm very strict about making sure you follow that structure, which is part of why it's going to be very difficult for you to do this assignment using ChatGPT or any other online writing aid. Because when you type into ChatGPT, write me a, an essay about a 
and then there were none focusing on theme. It's going to spit out an essay, but it's not going to follow the structure that I'm going to talk about in class. Right? It's also going to use words like visceral that I know you guys don't know or understand, or maybe some of you do, but it's usually fairly obvious to us. And then even if it's not obvious to us, we can just take a passage and like throw it into chat GPT. I think there's like an identifying tool that we can use. It'll figure it out. Anyways, long story short, it's going to be way more work for you to have somebody digitally write this for you than it is to just do it yourself. Right? So ideally, we're going to avoid that at all costs. Of course, that would be like academic dishonesty, and you guys signed a form that says you won't. So I'll put that out there as well. But uh, I mean, just before you get the idea, just understand that it's probably going to be pretty obvious in a variety of different ways if you use some sort of online help. Yes, sir. I'm going to have to edit this out of the video now. Please ignore that off topic question. Yes, go to the bathroom. So, anyways, back to the introduction. So I want to hook my reader in. From there, I'm going to introduce whatever my topic is, and then I'm going to finish off with a thesis statement. Does anybody remember what a thesis statement is? It's a bit of a combination of both of those things. And it, it, the thesis is bringing everything down into a single sentence or two that explains what my topic is. So your political cartoon that you just finished, was supposed to be based on an opinion, okay? My thesis statement is essentially, what am I arguing? Okay, what am I trying to prove here? Okay, now if it's, uh, um, if it's about what, if I'm writing my essay about what the best sandwich is, okay, that's exactly what my thesis statement is going to say. I believe that the best sandwich in the world is the turkey with bacon. It's a good combo. You need that fat to offset the lean turkey meat, otherwise it's going to be too dry. Okay? Either way, that's going to be my statement that directs my reader as to what they're going to be reading for the next three paragraphs. It goes right at the end of my introduction. We'll talk more about those tomorrow. From there, we go into our body paragraphs. Each body paragraph follows the same structure. I introduce my topic, I bring in my evidence to back it up, and then I transition on to the next one. So again, if I'm talking about my turkey sandwich, I might spend my first paragraph talking about how uh, I really like that it has a healthy feel to it and there's lots of versatility in the kind of toppings I can put on. Right, and I'm gonna give all my evidence and arguments in that regard, right? But each one of my body paragraphs is going to be about the thesis, whatever my thesis is, what am I trying to prove? We'll look at some examples of that moving forward here, okay? And then finally a conclusion, which is just your introduction paragraph in reverse. Okay. I'm going to reiterate what my topics were, I'm going to restate my thesis, I'm going to wrap up with some sort of grand sweeping statement that leaves my reader wondering or wanting to know more. And that's where I finish. In the end, um, and we'll talk more about each of those, so this is just kind of a quick overview, but in the end, uh, ideally, you're going to have a really clean structure that makes it easier for the easy for the reader to follow along. Ultimately, with an essay, and when I get to the end, I should know exactly what you are arguing, and I should very clearly be able to find the evidence that you used. Okay, that's that's the goal of an essay. Where we run into trouble, or at least where I've run into trouble historically with students, is when they lose track of the topic, or they didn't have enough evidence to back up their ideas, uh, or they try to get too complex and they don't really support their own thesis. That's where we run into difficulty. So the planning that we're going to do today is kind of the crucial first step here for getting us on the right track. So let's pop back for a second. Let's pretend we're writing an essay. Okay, before we even get in, I need to decide what it is we're writing about. So for the sake of today, let's pretend we're writing an essay about uh, what the best sports are at uh, the NSS. Okay, so that students participate in at the NSS. So my thesis is going to be uh, the best sports at the NSS. That's what I'm going to be trying to prove is why the sports I chose are the best sports. Okay. Now for this topic, it's pretty obvious what my three body paragraphs are going to be. Okay, I'm going to write one paragraph about each of the three best sports. Now I could also write one body paragraph about a characteristic of each of those sports and like tie each sport individually to them. 
but for the sake of this example, I'm just going to pick three sports. Uh, so maybe I start with um, luge, and then I go with um, baseball. Nah, I'm going to go with freestyle skiing. And um, then my last one is going to be about, uh, let's say, Irish dance. <laughs> so, all sports that people at this school participate in. No one does so, dance. not true. There is one Irish dancer. Fact. So, just to make it clear, going back to the big picture, let's think about the five paragraphs I talked about earlier. Three. Four, five. These three, each one of those is going to be one of those middle paragraphs. So one paragraph I'm going to talk about why luge is one of the best sports. One paragraph I'm going to talk about why freestyle skiing is one of the best sports. And one of the paragraphs I'm going to talk about why Irish dancing is one of the best sports. This I introduce them all. This I conclude it. This is where I bring in my ideas and my evidence. Okay. Now, before I even start my essay, I need to come up with my evidence. This is where I'm going to figure out if I have enough to write about. Where people often run into trouble is they get their idea, they just jump right into the writing, they write a great first paragraph, they write an okay second paragraph, they get to the third paragraph, they don't have any more evidence. They don't have anything else to talk about. And then they have two choices. They either make something up, which again doesn't sound very good, or they get off topic and they talk about something that doesn't really relate. So they talk about what my favorite sandwiches are, and the first paragraph they talk about ham sandwiches, and their second paragraph they talk about third sandwiches, and their fourth paragraph they don't know what to talk about anymore, so they just talk about how they like flying kites. Right? Totally off topics. Right? So before I even write, and what we're going to do today is we're going to try and come up with what's our topic, what are we going to use as our three ideas for our body paragraphs, and what evidence are we going to use? Right? So if I had these three things, I would need to um, I would need to go through and I'd need to start to what am I gonna argue? What am I gonna say here? Okay, so for luge I could talk about how uh, you get to call yourself a loser. That's kind of fun. Uh, you get to wear like a like a cool speed suit. Uh, you're like like really fast. So like that's neat. Okay, so I'm going to talk about those things. Maybe I have other evidence, but I want to at least have like three or four ideas that I can build off of. So when I write my paragraph, I'm going to talk about luge is one of the best sports we have represented here at the school. First of all, everybody gets to call you a loser. You get to have a good <laughs> laugh with everyone. You make lots of friends that way. Second, you get to wear these really cool suits. They're convenient and they make you extra aerodynamic uh, and uh, everybody gets to admire um, how strong you look. And then finally, uh, you get to go at death defying speeds. For those of people who are daredevils, they really crave that kind of uh, uh, adrenaline rush, and luge is the perfect solution for it. There you go. I got my evidence. Okay, so I have enough to write about. Freestyle skiing. I can talk about how they get to uh, uh, they get to wear baggy clothes everywhere. Uh, I can talk about how they all have like neat toques. And I can talk about how they get to do like flips and they get to train in uh, pools. Yeah, they do all their tricks into like pools or foam pits. What's that? Go look at me. He's not a freestyle skier. So, yeah, so I would, those are all my, that's all my evidence. And then Irish dance, I would talk about how there's less annoying kids in Irish dance than any other sport. <laughs> It's a There's only one. It's a joke. It's just like a mathematical reality. There's only I, I I don't even know who they are, but I can say there's less annoying kids in that. Like I only know two trampolinists, and one of them's really annoying. Yeah. I'm not naming names. Um, they uh, they get to learn complex scoring, and uh, they have kilts. No, no, that's Scottish. Uh, 
Hey, anybody who's an Irish dancer that might watch this in the video, please forgive him for his ignorance. Ignorance. So. What about free potato? For <laughs> Very good point, Morgan. I can't believe I didn't come up with that. So, guys, I want to point out that obviously this is just evidence I'm coming up off, coming up with off the top of my head. For your essay, you'll be using evidence that you pull out of the novel. Okay, you can have some personal opinion, right? I'm even okay with you, depending on the question, using references to the movie, right? But this is this is stuff that I'm just, this is all personal opinion here, right? As you get further into your academic career, the expectation would be that this evidence is stuff that you're researching. This is stuff, Rain, that you're finding with research into academic articles. Um, that you are looking and uh, basing on actual concrete sources of info, right? For an essay like this, I'm just writing opinions, right? So I just want to be clear with that. Now, suppose I got to my Irish dance paragraph and I figured out I actually don't know anything about Irish dance. I don't know what to talk about. What would that tell me about that topic? Not a great topic. I should pick something different, right? I can replace the sport with something different, right? If you're working on your assignment here and you immediately come up with, ooh, I'm gonna write about this and this paragraph, this and this paragraph, this and this paragraph, and you get to the part where you have to come up with evidence and you're like, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about. That's a problem. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are picking topics that you have enough to say, right? Second thing, if I did luge, freestyle skiing and aerials, which for the sake of this we'll say is like pretty similar in terms of the sport, I might find that I have too many things that overlap between those two topics. And if my two topics are too similar, I'm gonna sound repetitive, which I also want to avoid. Right, so I need to make sure that my two topics aren't the same. A lot of people were doing the topic in the last class of which character is the most guilty which three characters are the guiltiest in the book. And a lot of them were having that problem. When they were brainstorming, they were sounding repetitive. Oh, they killed a person. Oh, they didn't feel guilt, right? They're saying the same thing. So if I'm gonna be repetitive, I wanna avoid those topics as well, right? So just keep that in mind. But this is your starting point. This is what you're gonna start with today. You're not gonna come up with like sports. You're obviously gonna come up with things related to the novel based on the questions that we look at. Right, but this should be your first step in planning an essay. Because this is gonna tell me, one, do I have a clear topic? Two, do I have good supporting ideas? And three, do I have enough evidence to back up those ideas? Okay. If you can generate something like this, <laughs> writing the essay becomes easy. Okay, because it's just taking these and plopping them into the format. Right, verbally I could write this essay right now in, uh, in probably like two minutes. Just say it out loud to you. Right? As long as I've got the evidence to back me up. Does that sort of make sense? Give me a thumbs up if you kind of get what I'm saying right now. It's hard for me to tell sometimes. Okay. It seems like most of you are on the right track.